income idea number seven is brand deals. There's been a huge shift recently in the advertising industry. In the past, the only way for advertisers to reach their intended market was to use traditional media like TV and radio. Back in my day, it was the yellow pages. Check out how chunky this directory used to be. But now it's all changing and these big brands are now coming to individuals who have built a following online. And I don't mean huge ones either. These companies are actually more interested in what they call micro and nano influencers, as they have a stronger connection with their audience, which is therefore more targeted. I think this is such an amazing time to be alive, as this is breaking down the barriers between traditional media and the everyday person, which is therefore giving the power back to the people. Now is the best time to start building your personal brand, as it could be the most important thing you ever do. Just to prove my point, let's dive into some of the numbers. A staggering 80% of marketeers said that they find influencer marketing successful. They also love the amount of data that they can get from campaigns like this, as it's all trackable via links online. This kind of control is just not possible for a traditional advertising campaign. How do you measure the retention of a TV advert? Someone could just be on their phone or not even watching. The best part about this, as I've mentioned, is you don't need to be absolutely gigantic on social media to make money from brand deals. According to Social Bakers, micro-influencers boast up to a 60% increased engagement rate compared to big influencers. Brand deals are pretty passive and not hard to do, but of course you have to have some kind of audience. Building this up in this day and age is not overly difficult. You can start YouTube, or build an Instagram page, or even do TikTok. Just think about it, a little over a year ago I had zero followers, and now across all social media I have nearly 9 million. So if someone like me can do it, then so can you. I do brand deals for YouTube and TikTok, however, I only ever promote brands I really believe in. I'm definitely leaving a lot of money on the table by turning lots of deals down, but I don't care. Taking the money and promoting garbage to you guys is just something I would never do. Myself extortionate rates. Passive income idea number six is retail stores. In 2018, the US Department of Commerce estimated that only 14.3% of total retail sales occurred online. Of course, since the pandemic, people are shopping online more, but customers still prefer to buy in-store, as the customer experience is one aspect that can't be replicated by an online retailer. Before opening a store, there is a lot to consider, such as location, niche, and if you have a hungry customer base. I like to call this the golden triangle. If one or more of these things aren't correct, then you're headed for failure. A lot of people start a shop through passion, which causes them to take their eye off the numbers. This is the fatal flaw I see in many businesses, which leads to them going bankrupt, or even worse, becoming a slave to their own business. Cash flow is the lifeblood of a retail store. You need to have enough money coming in that it covers your expenses and allows you to make a profit. Earlier in my business journey, I had an issue with cash flow because my landlord kept increasing the rent. Being young, I was too scared to move because I felt I would lose a huge chunk of my customer base. I was basically being held at ransom, but ultimately I plucked up the courage after doing some thorough market research to move the business to a new location and buy the real estate. This allowed me to reduce my overhead, pump more money into buying stock and ultimately bring my team closer together as they're now right next door to my headquarters. Retail stores aren't what they used to be, but it doesn't mean that they're not a good business model. My retail stores still do very well. I see a physical store as more of a base for online operations as well. Just think Think about it, most restaurants do food delivery now on Uber Eats and Deliveroo. If they didn't, they would face extinction. This just proves that although you're opening a brick and mortar store, you just can't ignore the online revenue streams. It's about combining the two, and that's where the real magic happens. I have multiple model shops, which means customers can come in and browse and leave the same day with the item they want. Our motto is great service at internet pricing, and you just can't beat that electric real life atmosphere. That's why every now and again, you'll find me in my shop serving real customers. I just love it. My shops are currently generating me an average gross profit of $7,497 per week. Passive, in passive income idea number five is real estate. Now this one might not be for everyone, as you do require a little bit of money to get started, but in my opinion, it's one of the absolute best ways of making passive passive income and growing your net worth over time. The amazing thing about real estate is you can multiply
multiply your money by leveraging a small amount of cash to take control of a cash flowing property. Just think about it, you're controlling an asset and benefiting from it when you don't even own it. Of course, the most obvious way to do this is putting in some tenants so that they can be paying off your mortgage for you. The result of this is that you're able to use the rent to pay off the mortgage each month and also have a small amount left over for yourself. Once the property is paid off, all of the rent generated can slide straight into your pocket. Of course, this is a bit over glorified and there are things like maintenance and other costs that can sneak up on you, but it's a great way to generate passive income and it's really worked well for me over the years. There isn't really any other way you can put $30,000 down and take control of an asset worth $300,000. And by the time the tenants pay it off, the chances are it'll be worth close to double, especially in the UK. I do have some residential real estate, but the majority of my properties are commercial commercial, which means I don't rent houses to people. I rent warehouses to businesses, in particular, my businesses. When I buy a property, I like cash flow over capital gains. The appreciation is more like the marshmallows on top of a lovely hot chocolate. This is why I favour commercial property over residential real estate, as typically businesses will pay more in rent each month and sign longer leases than families in residential properties. The beauty of this is it gives me more security and a higher income. Owning the premises that my businesses operate from is great, because if I ever decide to sell the businesses, I I'm able to move in a new tenant and instantly get cash flow from those properties. Currently, my commercial real estate is generating a gross profit of $2,500 per week. But as I'm in the units, I don't exactly charge. Imagine how cool it would be to pull something from your imagination create a product around it and have people buy it all around the world. This also has the added benefit of being extremely profitable as you have full control over the price, materials used and manufacturing process. This allows for healthy margins which means ultimately more money ends up in your pocket. Creating products is an exciting thing from design to manufacturing, but the real success is once everything is set up and they're just passively selling themselves. Creating your own product might sound difficult as there are a lot of moving parts to the whole process. However, it's never been more accessible. It's easy to design what you want on a computer. Back in my day, I didn't have this luxury. I had to draw out all the designs by hand and measure everything meticulously. Computers also allow you to connect with people and manufacturers from all around the world and quickly compare prices without having to go from factory to factory and like I always say, have to press the flesh. With the invention of 3D printers, you might not even need a manufacturer at all. So many gaming accessories like controller stands and game racks are all created this way and there's a pretty high demand for these products. They are even making 3D printers to print full-size houses for people to live in. Crazy times! As a kid, I always dreamed of having my own range of products, something I could call mine and be really proud of, and of course you know me, in the process, make some profit. My products are radio control models, in other words, Big boys toys. The way my products are structured is quite special really. It was a lot of work many years ago to get it all going from drawing and designing to flying to China and meeting with factories. But now I have everything in place. I just call my manufacturers in China, Vietnam and soon to be the Philippines and order what I need. After placing this order, model shops from all around the world purchase them from my business to sell to their customers. So it's fairly passive and as I have huge containers delivered, I only need to order about 12 times a year. This currently makes me a gross profit of around $5,000 per week, but this is being held back by the current supply chain and shipping issues. If you can manufacture in your own country at a good price, then this really is the golden ticket as you have more control and less delays. Active income idea number three is starting a YouTube channel. This is one I never thought I'd be talking about, especially as a boomer, but that's the real beauty of YouTube. Anyone can start, as all you need is a phone and an internet connection. YouTube can be seen a lot like digital real estate. It takes a lot of work to get the videos structured and posted, but once they're up, they can just keep getting views and bringing in income with no further work needed from you. But Mark, this is a passive income video. That doesn't sound very passive to me. Well, coming up with the ideas, researching, filming, editing, all of that stuff is pretty hard. Although, if you're talking about something you love, 
It doesn't really feel like work at all. It's all about putting your efforts into creating what I call evergreen videos. These are the types of videos that always get views. For example, how to get a girlfriend or how to get followers on Instagram. Hey Curtis, put those ideas on the list for your channel. I will do that if you give me a day off. Well, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Lots of people ask me down the golf club, how do people even make money on YouTube? And to be honest, it's all down to those annoying ads you see at the beginning and in the middle of the videos. A bit like this one. If you didn't just see an ad YouTube, you need to sort that out. No, but seriously, this is called AdSense. And what this basically means is in return for YouTube putting these ads on your videos, you get a 55% slice of the revenue generated. However, you can't just start YouTube and make money. First, you need to attract a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours worth of watch time to become monetized. Now, according to a recent study, on average, it takes 15.5 months to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube and a grand total of 164 videos. But I've got to say, it didn't take me anywhere near that. So if a boomer like me can do it, I'm sure you can too. Something to consider before you start a YouTube channel, though, is not all channels are created equal. The amount of money you make depends on the type of content you create. Vlogging and children's content are less valuable to advertisers, whereas business and car channels are quite the opposite. YouTubers are usually pretty secretive about their earnings, but you guys know me. I don't mind so much. So as you can see, YouTube is paying me roughly $20 per thousand views, which works out at an average of $13,250 per week. Passive income idea number four is selling your own product range and having it ticking over in the background. Passive income idea number two is affiliate marketing. If you don't want the headache of selling your own products, then you can actually make money selling other people's. Just imagine riding a jet ski in amazing weather, all the while making money from a piece of content you create a year ago. With affiliate marketing, the rewards can just keep rolling in. It can be a great source of passive income, and the best part is it can have a pretty unlimited potential. Just think back to when you've referred a friend to Uber Eats or DoorDash, and in return received a voucher off your next order. Now imagine doing this, but at scale, to lots of people online, but instead of being a voucher, you get cold hard cash. The beauty of affiliate marketing is it doesn't require a lot to get started, which is always a bonus. It's really in your control, as the better quality traffic you drive, the better results you will get. This can be done through writing blogs, social media and posting reviews. On that note, you may have already seen this done on TikTok with those videos about Amazon products you need to buy. Just think, every time someone buys that product, they are getting a kickback and making some sweet profit. You can even affiliate market by just recommending products to family and friends that they might need. Just make sure they use your referral link so you get paid. Personally, I have one rule when it comes to affiliate marketing and it's that the deal should be mutually beneficial meaning you guys get something and in return I do as well a perfect example of this is like when I suggest grabbing a free stock from public worth all the way up to a thousand dollars if you're in the USA and if you're in the UK a free stock worth all the way up to 200 pound from free trade as you know I always leave those links in the description below PS you can also get ten dollars worth of free Bitcoin with Coinbase one key thing to bear in mind before you start affiliate marketing is how you can provide your audience with more value than you get in return. That may sound weird, but in business it's more about the giving than the receiving. I affiliate market through my social media and make a gross profit of around $15,000 per week. This fluctuates a lot depending on if I can find any good deals for you guys. In all honesty, I turn down about 99.9% .9 of deals that come my way as I just don't feel they provide you guys with enough value. Passage by 46% which was the biggest increase since 2008. This means there is such an opportunity in the online space just waiting to be snapped up for anyone that's at least a little bit tech savvy. Things like working remotely and shopping online are so much more common now, so I think it's safe to say that now is a better time than ever to get started with online sales. Well, any sort of online business really. The scope for online business is huge as there are so many choices at your fingertips. What you decide to do does depend on your situation though. Small eBay businesses started from your bedroom have a much lower barrier to entry, meaning they are easier to start and maintain, whereas you can't exactly start the next Tesla without funding and of course a lot of space. As I've said time and time again, no income is truly passive. 
Everything requires at least some work, sometimes. The reality is that starting an online business won't be passive in the beginning, but once you've got things up and running, they can start to run themselves. Even my assistant started his eBay business with $500 and has now generated $350,000 from selling low value items like iPhone cases. He's not the only one. Teens are making millions of dollars selling products on platforms like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and even through their own websites. Just think about it. If you can buy something for 50 cents and sell it for $5, then you're laughing. You're 10x in it. There are some people that will say this is a scam. However, to get these iPhone cases at 50 cents, you would need to order at least 50 units and wait for them to be shipped in. When a customer needs a new phone case, they don't want 50 and they don't want to wait. So they pay $5 to speed up this process. In business, you're always paid on the value you provide and in in this case, it's the speed of delivery at a reasonable price. Now, if holding a product isn't your cup of tea, then maybe it's worth considering Amazon FBA. This is when Amazon handle all picking, packing, customer service, and returns for you. So all you have to do is find winning products and keep them topped up with good stock levels. Platforms like Etsy are also great, especially if you're artsy, crafty, or just good with your hands, as people are making a lot of money from selling homemade goods. However, you don't have to sell physical items. They can be digital as well. I'm talking about courses, templates, graphic designs, and even NFTs. When it comes to online sales, I don't sell on Amazon. Sorry, Jeff. I know you want me. I actually sell items online in a few different ways. Firstly, on multiple eBay shops, and secondly, on my own websites. This is generating me a gross profit of around $6,250 per week. This is okay, but I've done a lot better than this before. At the moment, my focus is definitely on other income streams, so if I wanted to explode this further, I 100% could. It's just nice.